and welcome to this third episode in this series on problem solving where I'll go through the process of looking at a problem as formulated in a text to something that consists of data and operations that we can start to feed into our GIS. So if we um, first of all look at an example of a text, we could have this fictive power plant where we say that the plant must be near water, it must be on land, it must be close to a railroad, and it must not be too close to urban areas. Well, the first thing we need to do is that some of these things were a bit unclear, so we have to be have to clarify, make sure that everything is uniquely and can be understood uniquely. So things like near and close doesn't really work, and we can't say far from near or something like it. We have to define what we mean by that. So the first step will be to say, okay, what do I mean exactly by near and close? So let's say in this case that the power plant must be within 10 kilometers of water, and it must be within 500 meters of railroad, and it mustn't be within 20 kilometers of an urban area. The next thing we have to do is we have to deconstruct this. So, okay, what do we mean by water and land and railroad and urban? So a deconstruction really says, okay, can I find a data set or a operation on a data set that will give me what I want. The data sets that I will be using is um, these um, natural earth data set. So um, I could go in under, I guess, physical and look for water. And there might be, uh, there's some lakes. And I found something like a coastline. I probably I can't. Uh, there's no sea as such, um, and they're a bit peculiar. So I'll stick with lakes and coastline. So I can find a data set for water, two data sets, and using what I talked about in the earlier video in this um, uh, earlier episode. So I guess we could substitute water with a union of something with our, or be more specific, substitute this buff, this area here of lakes and our coastline. Um, land doesn't really exist. Um, there is a um, a something that is the admin, the administrative units, but that doesn't so that, that they will lakes will be part of them. So in order to get land, I will need to take the admin, and then I will have to do a difference of admin and lakes, because there's that lake layer we saw before. So I can find land as admin difference with my lakes. Railroads, they are there somewhere. So um, so that, that can be used directly. And urban area is also there. So these two can be constructed directly as layers from natural earth, while land has to be constructed by taking that min and doing a difference to the lakes to cut out the lakes of it. And this water has to be a combination of my lakes and coastline. I should say that from a technical point of view, one of the problems with this natural earth data set is that it is in a geographic coordinate system. 
So a coordinate system uses latitude and longitude. And because many of these things probably will be something with buffers, we will um, have to do a coordinate transformation and some clipping because we don't want to work with the whole world. We just want to work with this little part, Denmark, Sweden. Um, if um, you want to uh, follow along later, you can download the data set. I have a link to the data set. And I also have a video where I show how I extract or clip and reproject all of these different layers um, using the Python so uh, automation. And I also have a video where I show how to do it without automation. So um, check those videos if you want to create the data set or just download the data set um, yeah, directly. So um, we have now we can deconstructed some of these elements here. So um, we can um, start con talking about it again as layers and operations. So I guess that we could translate our move in distance to a buffer on border. And border could be that min, um, sorry, the lake and the coastlines. The, our land could be our admin difference, our lakes, railroads, and um, urban areas. So um, that's basically the first step of my um, of my deconstruction. Next, what we have to do is that we have to break this into, let's say, positive and negative constraints. So you can see this must be within, must not be within. So typically a text would have some positive and some negative constraints. And also some of these constraints can be alternatives. So in this case, for instance, the plant must be within 10 kilometers of water. And that was deconstructed into lakes or coastlines. So that could be a buffer around lakes or within a buffer around the coastlines. So remembering back to the video on operations, that would be a union. We will then have things like this one must be on land. So in that case, we could do an intersect or a clip on land to make sure that it was on land. So we have to go through these and then construct them as positive and negative. And um, in this case, we could say that if it's this water element, if we looked at that, you could say that's basically a union of a 10 kilometer buffer around our lakes or and a 10 kilometer buffer around our coastlines. So that would be water. We also had a restriction on railroads, which was a 500 meter buffer. So we could say that water and railroads will be taking our water and then intersecting it because it has to also to be moving. This is an and. It can be other wind, lakes or coastline, but it does have to be so and. It has to be within 500 meters of a railroad. So therefore, this will be a union and this will be an intersection. Um, finally, our all, all our positive constraints will be our railroad and our borders. And then we will clip that with our land. And land was really our admin with a difference of our lakes. So to create land, we had to do a admin zero and different lakes that gives us land. And if we clip our water railroad with this land, that will give all the positive constraint areas. Then in this example, there was one negative constraint, namely that we had that our area had to be 
or was, was not allowed to be within 20 kilometers of an urban area. So typically in this type of deconstruction, you first construct all of combine using union and set clip, whatever you use to combine your positive constraints, and then you combine all your negative constraints. In this example, I only included one negative constraint. And then you do a difference of your positive with your negative constraints. So that will be your result. So that's basically the standard a way of deconstructing from a text to a, um, a operation. So if we go back to our text, we started with having near water, close to, we had to make sure that those were clarified, what we meant by them, within 10 kilometers within. The next thing we had to do is that we had to deconstruct water and land to something that was available as data sets. So water could be made available by looking at coastline and lakes. Land could be made available by doing a difference on the admin data set of the lakes. Railroad was there already and urban areas were there already. So we could construct that, or deconstruct that into layers like that. And then finally, we will try and identify what's positive constraints and negative constraints. So in this case, we um, had to be close to water. That was one of our positive constraints. And we could do that by union a 10 kilometers above about our oh, water says here, so it has said lakes lakes and a 10 kilometer buffer on coastlines. We could then find, we had these railroads and we had to be close to a railroad. So while this was a or, this will be an and. So instead of having a union, we use an intersect. So we take our water constraint and intersect that with our railroad constraint. And then finally, just because I used an, a, the intersect, I'll use a clip here. Remember the difference is just that we have that no attributes. So when we use a clip, we will not receive um, the attributes from this layer. We'll only have the attributes from our water railroad. So it's just a way of reducing. If you have, you can always use a clip instead of an intersect if you do not use your attributes. So deconstructing it all the way down. So this is my positive and then my negative ones, I will take my positive constraints and then I'll difference them with my negative constraints and that will be my final process. So there are situations where you will have to break away from this approach um, because sometimes some data sets are large and some are small and sometimes it you have to optimize by how can I get rid of the large data set as quickly as possible? But in most situations, it's a relatively straightforward approach to clarify, to deconstruct, to bring into positive and negative constraints, and then difference those two. That would give you your final results. So basically, that's all for this video where I've gone from a text description of where so it all started back here with a text description of where my fictive power plant could be and ended up with a series of operations I can perform on data in order to find out where that power plant could be. In the next video in this series or next episode in this series, I'll try and look at how this can be implemented in QGIS using the visual model, the modeling tool. So hope to see you there on another video. So bye.